Welcome to Life Study of the Bible with Witness Lee, a program brought to you by Living Stream Ministry. Witness Lee, a servant of the Lord for over seven decades on five continents, culminated his ministry with a 21-year, book-by-book exposition of the entire Bible, which he called a life study. This life study is the basis of our program today, which includes short portions of the spoken messages given by Witness Lee. Now, let's join today's life study. The mighty prophet Elijah was a clear type of John the Baptist in the New Testament. John the Baptist was mighty and most assuredly he was clothed with the spirit of power as was Elijah. But John's most critical role was to announce and usher in Christ. Centuries before, Elijah ushered in Elisha. And just as Elijah was a type of John the Baptist, the prophet Elisha typified Christ and the New Testament Ministry of Grace. Ed Marks has joined us today as we fellowship this very interesting portion from the books of First and Second Kings, Second Kings mainly, Ed, dealing with Elisha. He's very interesting and not that much known of in the New Testament, is he? Right, Chris, and what you pointed out at the beginning is very critical. You have to look at the New Testament where the Lord Jesus himself says that, you know, Elijah was a type of John the Baptist, indicating that he was the real Elisha. Right. You know, so John the Baptist was kind of of a transition from the Old Testament economy to usher in Christ to bring in God's New Testament economy where he wants to dispense himself as life and grace into his people to be their enjoyment and their everything. So when we look at Elisha in this broadcast, we'll see that the miracles that he does all typify miracles of Christ being our grace and our life. So it's yeah. very good, Chris. These two Old Testament figures, again, sometimes it's hard to distinguish between even their names. There's Elijah or Elijah and Elisha. And uh, I just picked a passage. There's several in the New Testament that make the correlation between John the Baptist and Elijah. But in Luke uh, chapter 1, it says in verse 17, and it is he who will go before him. And that is, of course, the reference there is that is John the Baptist who will go before Christ in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the prudence of the righteous to prepare for the Lord a people made ready. So here was this New Testament or transitional person prophet, whatever we call him, Uh, John the Baptist sort of standing one foot in the Old Testament dispensation, one foot in the New Testament economy. But his main function is to announce and usher in the coming of Christ. That's right, Chris. And it's amazing when you look at Elijah and Elisha. Elisha entered into Elijah's ministry, and then the transition was made. In the same way, the Lord Jesus, he was baptized by John. Yeah. He went, so he entered into John's ministry. Yes. And then, of course, the New Testament ministry went on in a marvelous way so that he could be everything to us in the New Testament. So today, really, the focus of what we're looking at is the parallels that we see between the ministry of Elisha in the Old Testament and the ministry of Christ in the New Testament. Elisha's first miracle is recorded in 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 21 through 22. I'll read these verses. I think it's important to look at at least a couple of these passages to see how these miracles line up and really show us something about the nature of the ministry of Elisha. The men of the city said to Elisha, Behold, now the situation of this city is pleasant as my Lord sees, but the water is bad and the land is unfruitful. And he said, bring me a new jar and put salt in it. So they brought it to him and he went out to the spring of water and he threw salt in it and said, thus says the Lord, I have purified these waters. There shall not be from their death or unfruitfulness any longer. So the waters have been purified to this day, according to the word of Elisha, which he spoke. Ed, and I think if our listeners will recall, the Lord Jesus' first miracle is recorded in John chapter 2. And tell us about that. Yes, in John chapter 2, the first miracle was when he changed the water into wine. And Chris, what this indicates is that the whole gospel of John 
talks about the principle is that the Lord, whenever he enters into you, Uh into your situation, he changes death into life. Now, this is what we'll see in application here, and I think it'll be very helpful for our listeners. So in principle, these two miracles, the one by Elisha, the one by the Lord Jesus, identical. Exactly the same. And again, the principle is the Lord's changing the death in our being into life to make us living, functioning members of his body. All right, let's join Witness Lee then with this first portion. Don't forget, Elijah typifies John the Baptist, who came before Christ. John the Baptist ushered in the Lord Jesus. This was typified by Elijah ushering in Elisha. Elisha is a type of Christ in doing miracles of grace in life. Today, Christians may pay attention to miracles, but they neglect two things to the uttermost, grace and life. Paul the Apostle, in his epistle to the Romans, stressed grace. He also stressed life. He says, by grace, we have been justified by God. And this justification is unto life. God's grace issues in divine life for us to reign, to be kings. We all know now, Elijah did big miracles. What a miracle to set up the heaven, <laughs> to call down the fire, to burn the water, and so forth. But Elisha came to replace him, to do miracles, not of wonders, but miracles of grace in life. First of all, he healed the bad water of Jericho. Jericho signifies Satan. With Satan, there's nothing but death. Even the water is death, a bad water. The people now came to Elisha, and Elisha healed the bad water, making it a good water, a water that gives life. You know, the first miracle the Lord Jesus did was what? Was making the water to wine. The significance of the two miracles is the same. Making deaths into Ed, I hope our listeners can really latch on to this point. It is so precious and very significant. Elijah had done these great miracles of just sheer wonder and power, shutting up the heavens, opening up the heavens, and then calling down fire and consuming the offering and even the water around the offering and the trench and Mm -hmm. all of these things, tremendous miracles, just causing awe and wonder. And in a way, you know, vindicating that who was really the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yet when Elisha comes on the scene, his miracles are totally different in their essence. They're not such mighty, grand things that would just cause you to be so much in awe. But the spiritual essence of these miracles was identical to those which were performed by the Lord himself. This is a marvelous point, isn't it? It is, Chris. And like Brother Lee pointed out, and we emphasize that it matches the Lord's first miracle in the Gospel of John, where he changed the water into wine, which signifies the changing of the death in our being into life. And Chris, I would like to just mention this, you know, when the Lord came, he was grace coming to man. Grace is God enjoyed by us. And like Brother Lee mentioned, if we receive the abundance of grace in Romans 5, 17, we reign in life. 
we reign over sin, yeah. Satan, and death, which applies to this miracle. And Chris, I would just like to mention something to our listeners. You know, we might be in a death situation where there's just death waters, right. you know, like these things Elisha described. And we might even feel we're dead inside, even though we're believers. You know, Elisha cast salt into those death waters. Right. And salt in the Bible signifies Christ himself in his crucifixion with the element of his death. If we're in some kind of bitter situation, a situation that's very hard for us, or we find bitterness in our being, I would encourage you just to open up to the Lord right now and say, Lord Jesus, I just open my whole being up to you. Right. I open this situation up to you, and I want you to dispense yourself into me in this situation. If we pray like that and open like that, he'll change the death and bitterness in our being into life. So from Elisha changing these bitter waters, uh, turning them sweet, to the Lord changing death water into wine, signifying life, this is really the New Testament principle, isn't it, Ed? It is, Chris. And if you look at throughout the whole Gospel of John, that's the principle that the, every person the Lord met, he was giving them himself as life. He said, I came that you might have life, and I am the life. So this is a New Testament principle. Here. So we're really seeing, in principle, the transition between the Old Testament economy and the New Testament economy. The miracles of Elijah were great and wonderful, but they were very much Old Testament in characteristic, in nature, in essence. But what Elisha was doing was very New Testament in its essence. Exactly, Chris. And that's why, you know, of course the Spirit is powerful, and we accept that. But God's main purpose is to dispense himself into us as life and grace. And this is what we need to focus on. Another uh, well-known story in the New Testament gospel in Matthew, the Lord Jesus feeding 5,000 one time, 4,000 another time. And he does it with just a very small provision, uh, five loaves and two fishes in a very well-known story. Well, the second great miracle of Elisha, again, the same in principle as this one. And rather than read the verses, I'll just give a short paraphrase. There was a, a widow who uh, had fallen uh, into a difficult situation, and uh, the creditors from uh, her husband's debt were coming, and all she had to offer them when Elisha asked her what she possessed, all she had was one small jar of oil. And so he tells her to bring the jar and uh, encourages her to bring some empty jars from the neighbors. And they line up all the jars, and he starts pouring from this jar, this one jar, and jar after jar after jar is filled. And, of course, he tells her, "Run, go ahead and sell all these, pay off your debt, and you can live off the excess. So it's impossible to miss the parallel, isn't it? It is. When we hear Brother Lee's ministry and we fellowship about this, we'll see that it's very experiential today for us yeah. as Christians. Good. Let's go back to Witness Lee. Here's a story. A woman was poor and became a debtor to people. She had nothing to pay the debt. And she came to Elijah. And Elijah, you know, did something just to use her little oil to produce a large oil. So that oil was sold and it was more than adequate to pay off her debt. What is that? That is calling the things not being as being. In Matthew chapter 14 and chapter 15, the Lord Jesus fed thousands of people. The first time he fed 5,000 people with two small fish and five barley loaves. Just like the woman, a little oil. In principle, what the Lord did is the same as Elisha did. You cannot find another prophet did so many things just like what the Lord Jesus did. So he was a type of the Lord Jesus in the New Testament age. Then resurrecting the dead from death, my <laughs> Elisa did this. But what she did was just a little type. But the Lord Jesus did more. How many dead people 
have been resurrected by the Lord Jesus, including you and me. How many? Millions, millions, millions. All that people made alive by the Lord Jesus. And Elisa did the same thing. As a kind of time to have a start. Now, to resurrect people, and this is to give life. It is not just a matter of miracle, neither a matter of grace, but a matter of grace resulting in life, even into the reign as kings. Ed, a lot here in these two stories that he tells, of course, the woman with the uh, single jar of oil and how he provided for her. And then, of course, the second one where he raised from the dead the son of the Shunammite woman. And uh, again, uh, two obvious parallels to the earthly ministry of the Lord Jesus, aren't they? Yes, Chris. When the Lord fed the 5,000, you know, all that the disciples could come up with is five loaves and two fishes. And many times, this is what we feel when we serve the Lord. We don't have anything. (laughs) But if we just consecrate ourselves to the Lord and bring what we do have of him, you know, right. and we give that back to him. He blesses it and breaks it, and he can distribute himself in a marvelous way into people if we just make ourselves available to him for him to flow through. And Chris, there's some principles here. The first thing the Lord did, you know, when they gave him those five loaves and two fish is he looked up to heaven, you know, and he blessed it. So that shows that if we're going to experience this principle, this miracle of Elisha of grace, we need to take God as our source. Always look to him. Mm. He's the source of everything. We have to rely on him, trust on him, depend on him. Then with that widow, you know, with the empty vessels, there's another principle here, Chris, because you notice like the story you told, if you read it in Kings, every empty vessel she got was filled. (laughs) Yeah. And when they ran out of vessels, the oil stopped which shows that what the Lord wants to do is he wants us to be filled with the Spirit. And for us to be filled with the Spirit in the New Testament, we have to be fully open to him. If we're full, then the oil stops. And so we always need to empty ourselves out. Don't be satisfied with your past experience of Christ. You know, there's a verse in Luke 153. This is Mary speaking, you know. She says, the rich he sends away empty, the hungry he fills with good things. We always need to maintain our hunger for the Lord. There's always something new of him, something fresh of him. If we're empty and open, then he fills us. You see, so we take him as our source. We stay open to him and hungry. We ask him to fill us with the Spirit daily. And then this miracle becomes ours in a New Testament reality. And many times we feel dead, but we get raised from the dead. We've had that experience many times. Ed, the last uh, type or picture we want to look at from uh, the uh, Old Testament story of Elisha is one that's a little hard to understand. I'm going to go ahead and read these verses, and then we'll uh, listen to Witness Lee, and then look to you to uh, make it all clear, because this is a more difficult point. I think the ones we've shared thus far have been fairly easy to see the parallels, but uh, a little more difficult here. Okay, chapter 4, verses 38 through 41. Then Elisha returned to Gilgal, and there was a famine in the land. And the sons of the prophets sat before him, and he said to his attendant, Put on the big pot and boil some stew for the sons of the prophets. And one went out into the field to gather herbs, and he found a wild vine and gathered from it a lapful of wild gourds. And he came and cut them up into the pot of stew, though they did not know what they were. And they poured out the stew for the men to eat. And while they were eating some of the stew, they cried out and said, O man of God, there is poison in the pot. And they were not able to eat it. And he said, Then bring some flour. And he threw it into the pot and said, Pour it out for the people that they may eat. And there was nothing harmful in the pot. All right, Ed, the story of the poisonous wild gourds. Here's Witness Lee. Eliza was a very accurate type of Christ. This was typified when Elisha nullified the poison of the wild gourds. Probably many of us do not know what are the gourds. 
This is something like a melon, but it is poisonous. The disciples of Elijah, they were short of food. They went out to gather the gores. This is a type of the disciples of Christ. They were hungry. They pick up this kind of doctrine, that kind of doctrine, <laughs> the doctrine of Pharisees, the doctrine of Sadducees, even the doctrine of Herod, the Roman governor. All those are poisonous. Yet the Lord Jesus healed the situation by himself as a flower, a fine flower. Today, everywhere is a wilderness full of gods, too, too many teachings. Under the name of Christian teachings, but full of poison. We wasted much time in reading others' books. Some of the books are good, generous teaching, but not many are so pure are so pure. But this doesn't mean we don't accept others' ministry. For instance, I strongly recommend it to you again and again the books of Andrew Murray. And I especially point out to you, you have to read his book by the title, The Spirit of Christ. God's economy in the Old Testament was in typology. Then in the New Testament, God's economy is a fulfillment. So, Elisha was a very accurate type of Christ. Ed, in Matthew, the Lord told the disciples, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And then he tells them, you should know, I'm not talking about physical bread here. How does this connect to this type in the Old Testament? Chris, it's amazing. You know, here you've got this story of these poisonous gourds, you know, in the stew. And Elisha casts fine flour into the stew. And, of course, it becomes edible. Mm -hmm. Well, the fine flour in the New Testament is Christ. And the negative things, the evil things, the heretical things are all signified by leaven. So in the New Testament, the leaven is the poisonous gourds in yeah. Elisha's story. And Chris, just real briefly, you know, you've got these different kinds of leaven that you mentioned. The leaven of the Pharisees is, is hypocrisy. See, we always need to beware of hypocrisy. Any kind of thing or teaching we're under, even in our own being. We need to pray, Lord, save me from hypocrisy. I like mm-hmm. to be real. Right. The leaven of the Sadducees is modernism. Mm-hmm. They didn't believe in the resurrection. Well, you've got teachers that don't believe that Jesus is God. Right. That's terrible. You have to realize Jesus is God. Any kind of teaching that doesn't believe in the deity of Christ, the redemptive death of Christ, his resurrection, is the leaven of the Sadducees. Then you've got the leaven of Herod, and that's politics, you Uh, know. Right. And the political world, Chris, is just anti-God, anti-Christ, and Uh anti-Christian, anti-Israel. When we say anti-Israel, we're talking about Israel in the pure sense. Right, of course. The biblical sense. But Chris, the bottom line is this, Chris. The way we can discern a proper, healthy teaching that's not poisonous, Paul said in 2 Corinthians 11, 2, that his ministry was to betroth us to Christ. Wow. So, Chris, when we're under a proper ministry, it stirs us up to love the Lord Jesus. What we want in this program is, When you're done listening to it, something rises up in you to say, Lord Jesus, I love you. You're my husband. I give myself to you. I just want to pursue you. When we're under that kind of teaching that betroths us to Christ and stirs us up to love the Lord Jesus, there are no poisonous gourds there. Wow. Ed, that's wonderful. Uh, Great application. Uh, Difficult point, but... um... It got very clear very quickly. Thanks, Brother Ed. Always good to have you in uh, the studio, and let's do this again soon. 
And you're welcome, Chris. It's just marvelous seeing all these pictures in the Old Testament with the New Testament reality. With the New Testament reality, we really see Christ in the New Testament when we now read these stories of Elisha in the Old Testament. And if um, listening, you've had your hunger and your love for the Lord stirred up, we hope also you've had your appreciation for the ministry that we're bringing you each day. And I can't think of a better uh, resource for you than to get these printed life study messages. If you'd like to get this volume, it's a one volume that includes both First and Second Kings. It's available if you contact us toll free, 1888 Life Study, 888 543 3788. We hope you'll join us uh, for the rest of the week now as we continue on in our third week of the Life Study of Kings. For Ed Marks, I'm Chris Wilde. Thanks so much for listening today. Witness Lee's remarkable commentary on the life of Abraham, taken from the Life Study of Genesis, is now available from Living Stream Ministry in a single volume entitled Abraham Called by God. Abraham Called by God by Witness Lee is available at Christian bookstores everywhere, or you can order by calling 1-888-543-3788. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on social media or visit our website for more from Living Stream Ministries.